The oxidation of alcohol is going to be the topic of this lesson, and we're going to go through the difference in oxidizing primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols. We'll talk about two major oxidizing agents for alcohols, chromic acid and PCC, and at the end we'll even take a little time out to talk about the mechanism which some of you will be on the hook for. Now this lesson's part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the 2020-21 school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. So before we talk about the reagents involved in oxidation, I just want to talk about what oxidation is again. And we talked about it earlier in this chapter, and we actually talked about the reduction, the exact opposite reaction, but we reduced ketones and aldehydes with our hydride reagents to make alcohols. Well, now we're going to be doing the exact opposite. We're going to be starting with alcohols. We're going to be oxidizing them to form ketones and aldehydes, as well as carboxylic acids, as we'll see. Now, if you kind of take a look and, and remind yourself of what the definition of oxidation was, so one of the definitions we gave is that you're going to gain more bonds to electronegative atoms, like oxygen, for example, be the relevant one here, and then lose bonds to hydrogen. That's oxidation. So it turns out every step of oxidation is going to do that in this case with alcohols. It's going to gain one bond to oxygen, lose one bond to hydrogen. So if we take a look at our primary alcohol here, so the carbon of the hydroxyl group is, uh, the carbon of the alcohol, the one bonded to the hydroxyl group, is definitely the one you want to focus on. And in this case, it's bonded to two hydrogen atoms. And as a result, that's going to make a primary alcohol capable of undergoing two steps of oxidation because we have the opportunity to lose two bonds to hydrogens and gain two bonds to oxygens. So with our secondary alcohol, we've only got one hydrogen bonded to the carbon that's bonded to the hydroxyl group. And so only one step of normal oxidation is even possible. And then for our tertiary alcohol, so in this case, you see that your tertiary carbon here is not bonded to any hydrogens whatsoever. And as a result, oxidation is simply just not possible in any normal sense. Now, under harsh conditions, you get some funky stuff going on that breaks carbon-carbon bonds, but we're never going to talk about them in this course. All right, so then primary and secondary alcohols. We'll go back to the secondary one here. So if we make an additional bond to oxygen, you always want to kind of focus on the carbon here again. Look at it from the perspective of carbon. We make another bond to oxygen and lose the bond to hydrogen. We're going to make a ketone. And so in this case, secondary alcohols are oxidized to ketones and only go through one step of oxidation. Once you're here, this carbonyl carbon no longer has any bonds to hydrogen and no further oxidation is going to occur. Now with the primary alcohol, on the other hand, we can form another bond to oxygen at the expense of losing one of those bonds to hydrogen. And so now we've only got one hydrogen left, but because we still do have a hydrogen bond to that carbonyl carbon, another step of oxidation is possible. Taking us all the way to a carboxylic acid. And so in this case, one step of oxidation with a, a, a primary alcohol is going to take us to an aldehyde, but the second step is going to take us all the way to a carboxylic acid. All right, so now let's talk about our two major oxidizing agents. So here we've got chromic acid, here we've got PCC. So chromic acid is H2CrO4. It looks like this right here. So problem with H2CrO4 with chromic acid here is that we usually make it in C2, we say. So we don't like to have a bottle of it sitting on the shelf normally. We usually, you know, mix what we need to mix together to make it when we need to use it. And so in this case, the most common examples here are going to be uh, sodium or potassium dichromate with aqueous sulfuric acid or chromium trioxide with a strong acid a strong aqueous acid, most notably aqueous sulfuric acid. And so you could see it represented in one of these three principal ways. Either they're going to tell you what chromic acid looks like, H2CrO4, so, or they're going to give you one of the common mixtures that we use to create it. So, uh, but that's kind of a pain in the butt, right? Because it can be represented in a multitude of ways. And uh, so you just kind of got to get used to that those are chromic acid. Now, the other reagent here and the weaker one is called PCC and you're usually going to be uh, seeing it as an abbreviation here just PCC but it stands for pyridinium chlorochromate so and here's 
Uh, you get it by mixing chromium trioxide, hydrochloric acid, and pyridine all together. So in this case, there's a protonated pyridine molecule. That's the pyridinium. So and then the chromium trioxide and the chlorine end up bonded together in this chlorochromate structure. And that's what actually ends up serving as the oxidizing agent. Now, it turns out when we use this, we make sure to use this anhydrous. And so one thing that's not intuitive, and it's not you know explicitly written out typically, is that the chromic acid is an aqueous reagent, but the pyridinium chlorochromate is specifically an anhydrous agent. And that's important, as we'll see in just a little bit. All right, the chromic acid is the stronger reagent, so and the PCC is the weaker. And so chromic acid is going to oxidize an alcohol as far as it'll go. And so for a primary alcohol, chromic acid will oxidize it all the way to a carboxylic acid. So it'll take a secondary alcohol to a ketone, and then again, nothing's, neither one of these is going to oxidize a tertiary alcohol. Whereas pyridinium chlorochromate will oxidize an alcohol one step when possible. So again, for the tertiary alcohol, not possible. For the ketone, only one step is possible. I'm sorry, for the secondary alcohol, it's going to form a ketone because only one step is possible. But for the primary alcohol, here's your difference. Even though two steps in principle are possible, well, with PCC, only one step happens, and so you're going to end up with the aldehyde. And the big difference is it turns out to, to convert the aldehyde to the carboxylic acid, water needs to be present. And with PCC being an anhydrous reagent, no water, it's not possible. Now, it turns out that chromic acid, again, is an aqueous reagent, and that's why this is going to occur. And so it turns out chromic acid can oxidize a primary alcohol all the way to carboxylic acid, and the reason is because it oxidizes aldehydes to carboxylic acids. That's implied. We don't always spell that out entirely, but it totally is implied here that it does oxidize an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid. And there's not a great way to stop it, you know, in the middle and say, well, only one equivalent or something. It doesn't work that way. So if you start with a primary alcohol, it will end up oxidized completely to carboxylic acid by chromic acid. Had you wanted to stop at the aldehyde, that's when you would use PCC. And so net result here then again is for a secondary alcohol, doesn't matter which reagent you use. Chromic acid, PCC, same effect. But for a primary alcohol, there's your big difference. PCC, you stop at the aldehyde. Chromic acid, all the way to a carboxylic acid. One other quick thing I want to mention about our reagents here. So uh, a version of chromic acid often used for certain testing purposes is called the Jones reagent, and a version of PCC is called the Collins reagent, although this one's much less common. So, and sometimes you've got to talk about, you know, what's going to give a, a positive result with the Jones reagent and stuff like this. Well, the Jones reagent reacts with primary alcohols, secondary alcohols, and again, it reacts with aldehydes technically as well. And the idea is that sometimes you get it just labeled the, simply the chromic acid test. And the idea that whether you've got a primary alcohol, secondary alcohol, or an aldehyde, so they're going to react with chromic acid. And so chromic acid, it turns out, is orange in color. So, but when it oxidizes your, say, primary alcohol to a carboxylic acid or your secondary alcohol to a ketone, the chromic acid itself is therefore going to get reduced. So it's the oxidizing agent, but it gets reduced. And when it does, it goes from chromium-6 in chromic acid here to chromium-3+, which is green in color. And so a positive chromic acid test, again, which gives evidence that you have a primary alcohol, a secondary alcohol, or an aldehyde, is just a color change of orange to green. All right, so I just want to make sure the, the difference between chromic acid and PCC is clear, and I just want you, and I'll do it along with you, obviously, to pick the appropriate reagent to carry out the following oxidations. And so we look at this first one. First thing you should realize is that we're starting with a primary alcohol, and we're ending up with an aldehyde. And so in this case, with the primary alcohol, again, it's capable of two steps of oxidation, having two hydrons on that carbon. But in this case, we only end up doing one step of oxidation. We gain one bond to oxygen, lose one of the hydrons, and another step would be possible, but we didn't do it. And so in this case, with that primary alcohol, to only oxidize it to an aldehyde one step, that's where you needed to use, hopefully you already predicted it, PCC. And it's usually going to be written as PCC as a reagent. All right, the next example, again, you're starting with the same primary alcohol, but this time you're ending up with the carboxylic acid. You're going through two steps of oxidation. You started with one bond to oxygen, now you've got one, two, three bonds to oxygens. You started off bonded to two hydrons that are not drawn in, and now this carbon is not directly bonded to any hydrons. So it gained two bonds to oxygen, lost two bonds to hydrogen. It went through two steps of oxidation and is now fully oxidized. And with a primary alcohol, that is what chromic acid does. And again, you've got a few different ways you can write out chromic acid, and one of the more common ones is sodium or potassium dichromate with aqueous sulfuric acid. But again, this could have said H2CRO4. This could have said CRO3 with H2SO4. Any one of those would have been a common way of presenting chromic acid. 
So finally, in the last one here, we've now got a secondary alcohol, and secondary alcohol gets oxidized to a ketone. That's one step of oxidation, and this carbon for the alcohol is one hydrogen bonded initially, but once it's oxidized to a ketone, there's no more hydrogens there, and so it's fully oxidized. And so for a secondary alcohol, again, it's only capable of one step of oxidation. And so whether you use chromic acid, which will oxidize it all the way, which is one step, or whether you use PCC, which will oxidize it one step, which is all the way, it's not gonna make a difference. And so here, whether you write PCC or whether you write chromic acid, representing it one of those three common ways, any of, uh, either of these are gonna work. And so in this case, you didn't have to be specific. Either reagent was going to work. But with a primary alcohol, again, that's where you're gonna see the difference. Do you create an aldehyde, only one step of oxidation? That's PCC. Do you create a carboxylic acid, two steps of oxidation? That's what chromic acid does. All right, so as promised, I do just wanna take a minute to go over the mechanism of chromic acid oxidation. And the truth is that like for 80 or 90% of you, this isn't gonna be a mechanism that you've probably even been presented with and you're not on the hook for. So if you're in that category, just ignore the rest of this video. So, but for the 10 or 20% of you where it was presented, this is for you. And we're gonna look specifically at the oxidation of a secondary alcohol to a ketone. And so obviously this hydrogen's drawn in because it's gonna be part of the mechanism eventually. So, but here's chromic acid. And don't forget that chromic acid is often uh, made in the presence of aqueous sulfuric acid, and, and that sulfuric acid is going to be part of our mechanism. So hence, I've got it drawn in here. So this mechanism starts off with nucleophilic attack from our alcohol oxygen to chromium. And to make room for that, these pi electrons get pushed out. But instead of just getting pushed out onto that oxygen, they actually are used to grab a proton from our strong acid, in this case, sulfuric acid. And so in this case, this chromium is not going to have just two OHs. It's going to end up with a third OH right here as well. Chromium still double bonded to one oxygen, and then now it's got three different OHs. So we've still also got this hydrogen here, and now we've got a positive formal charge on uh, our alcohol oxygen. So then a water molecule comes in. and it's gonna deprotonate right here on our alcohol. That's gonna leave us So, and it turns out when we deprotonated all sulfuric acid here, we also formed, I probably should draw it right here, HSO4 minus ion, and that base right here is gonna actually be what deprotonates this hydrogen that we need to lose right here. That frees up these electrons right here to form our double bond to oxygen, which causes this bond to break and those two electrons to be gained by chromium. This is a stage not only where we're oxidizing, forming that carbon oxygen double bond, but it's the stage step also where chromium is getting reduced. Chromium is gaining these electrons that it once was sharing, so that in a sense belonged to the more electronegative oxygen, but now we're gonna be a lone pair on chromium and belong to him alone. All right, now that's gonna take us to our ketone there. Cool, and we've arrived at our ketone and obviously have this lovely side product. And it turns out that chromium uh, intermediate there is actually gonna continue getting reduced uh, to chromium three plus eventually, which is green in color. So cool, like I said, not an off presented mechanism, so, but significant enough that I decided to cover it in this lesson. Now, if you have found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? A couple of the more important things you can do to help support the channel. If you are looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you're looking for practice problems, chapter tests, uh, final exam reviews, practice final exams, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.